Yeah. So the, the, the same task... Because, uh, so, sorry, because they are very uh, interested I in knowing yeah. um, what kind of role task analysis yeah. playing okay. in uh, UCD practice. Okay, yeah. so uh, let me, let me uh, explain a little bit, or let me give an example. Yeah. So um, the type of task analysis and task design that we have practiced this week um, is also used in real life big industries, like in Philips, for instance. Uh, and, and Philips is known here, right? Yes. Philips is well, a, known, big, yeah. a worldwide electronic company, but its, its home is the Netherlands. And, and actually we collaborate with Philips and sometimes my students have been working in Philips and I've been teaching with uh, the, the head of the, of the ergonomics department of Philips, George Rakers, for many years, Ali, I think, mm -hmm. like five or six years. Uh -huh. we, we had to, so the, the head of, of Philips design ergonomics mm -hmm. and I had uh, courses for industry yeah. on, on task design for about five or six years. Oh. in the Netherlands, so we mm -hmm. gave courses, and, and um, so uh, this type of things are practiced in industry, but mm -hmm. there is a big problem if the industry is not used to it. Uh, because if the industry is not used to it, they tend, well, in my part of the world, they tend to say, we design stuff, we build it, we make it completely ready, and then we ask an ergonomist or a usability engineer to come have a look and tell us that it's okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And in many cases, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you tell them, well, this is like, let me say the coffee shop. If you tell them, well, in fact, it's kind of not so good that somebody has to point to a screen, which is a piece sheet of paper, and then somebody else has to put to another screen and has to shout to somebody else who has to look up in another screen. This could be better, and then they will say, okay, in the next release we will change, but for now we will not change. Mm -hmm. So, ergonomists, you know what the term means? Ergonomics. Ergonomics, ergonomists and usability designers are normally only asked to be involved at the very last part of design. And, and, and what we try to do and what, what I consider good companies like Philips do is to have the usability designers and the human computer interaction specialist at the start. Yes. So as completely early as at possible. the start, talk to all the different stakeholders, have a look, do some ethnographic research, find out how people do things, and then together with software engineers and hardware engineers start to design. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a difference in industrial process and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, because you have to change the, the, the view of the management. So uh, to, just to give you one example and for that example, um, I, if you make a note Ali, I will find uh, the original paper which is a writer from Lowe. This is, was, used to be a student of mine, when he was finished his study, um, he was uh, looking for a job, and we had a European project paid by the European Commission, where we could have postdocs, so people who finished their doctorate, postdocs, to, to be working somewhere for a year, paid by the European Commission. Mm -hmm. And my student, Reinhard van Loo, was working in a design company in Austria for a year, but not paid by the company, because he was paid by our European project. Okay. And then he went to the company and told them, I would like to do task analysis. The, the company, and we have a very interesting paper about it, so Ali will fi help me find it, and I will make it available on your website, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> the company is an Austrian company that designs safety critical systems. Mm -hmm. So the company, designed and built systems for the Austrian bank, systems for the Aus Austrian railway, and systems for, um, well, I think these are the main, main thing, banks and the railway system, systems where safety is a big issue. So systems, for instance, where there is a building where nobody was allowed to enter the building. If somebody would enter the building, he should be immediately found and identified. On the other hand, the building was closed with iron bars for the windows and so on. And if there would be a fire, immediately they should detect where people are and make people safe. Mm -hmm. 
even if the people were a burglar. Mm -hmm. If somebody was not allowed to be in the building, but he managed to be in the building, he should still be rescued in case of fire. Right. So this was very complicated safety critical systems. Um, you might remember in, in one of my first presentations, I showed a picture of a big room with many different screens. Now this picture was from that project. This was a picture of a control room of a, a chemical plant. And in this plant there were actually in the control room three people and they had 12 screens. Mm -hmm. Three people were watching 12 screens and on some of the screens were just error messages. And the error messages were scrolling across the screen. But the person also had to watch five other screens. So this is the problem. Now my student was allowed to do a task analysis because the company didn't need to pay. The European Commission paid for my postdoc. He did a task analysis and came with conclusions and a completely new way to approach designing such a safety critical system. Mm -hmm. And then the company hired him and asked me if there were more students they could hire. <laughs> so, but you first had to prove that usability design at the start pays off. Yeah. And that's the big problem mm -hmm. in Europe and in the US. Right? Some companies know Philips, knows and Philips is very proud that they stick to all the ISO standards on usability and ergonomics, mm -hmm. but many companies do not. They say it's yeah. too expensive. If the design is finished, then we ask the usability person to say that it's okay. And if the usability person says it's not okay, we say next time we will do better. Yeah. So yeah. that's the situation. Yeah. So as I understand it, uh, task analysis is mainly sh should be mainly used uh, at uh, the stage for the context of uh, use analysis. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm always telling my, my software engineer colleagues, task analysis is part of requirements engineering. Yes, yes. to so understand. Uh, it, yeah. It's not something at the end, it's in at order the to develop requirements. Yes. So in a way, you could say what you developed today for your coffee shop. So what you showed us on the, about the coffee shop, about the different roles, because you changed the role of the client, the customer, you changed the role of the barista, you changed the role of the cashier, right? And, and you changed the whole business process. You made it much more simple. And, and, and uh, well, this is in fact a set of requirements for somebody to design the system because now the hardware and the software should be developed right okay. so it's very early in the process yeah. okay. and industries who do that will find out that they have to pay yeah. more at the start okay. but at the end their product is much more usable and okay. and, and, and needs yeah. less repair in a way yeah but you have to sell this to industry this is the problem Yes, yes. And, and the European industries, some are difficult to convince. Yeah. So the, the European Commission gave us actually money yeah. to show the industries for free, you get my task analysis, and then they yeah. said, okay, I hire you. Do you have more students? Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, the big companies like uh, Philip, uh, currently they already yeah, uh, and, and put uh, task analysis in their practice. Right. Yeah. Okay. The good. Philips, uh, Philips Design. So this is why I, I've been teaching with the, the, the head of the ergonomics department of Philips. Okay. Because they know, okay. and, and he publishes yeah. about it in in in, uh, in yeah. the software engineering books. Okay. Yeah. So as you know, what is the situation in uh, North America? Uh, in North America, the, the situation is actually a little bit better than in Europe okay. for the big companies. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, IBM or those kind of companies. Uh, IBM is a good company. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft is a good company. Yes. Is the door locked? Apple is a bad company. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is terrible. I mean, Apple Apple used to be a company that was an example. Yeah. Up till when Steve Jobs came back. Yeah. And when Steve Jobs came, there was there was a, a, in Cupertino, California, a big center that was Apple Advanced Technologies. Yes. In Apple Advanced Technology Center, I, I, I was allowed to be there for one week. Uh -huh. Donald Norman was the head of Apple Advanced Technologies at that time. You know Donald Norman? Oh, Donald Norman, yeah. okay. He yeah. was the head, yeah. the, the, the CEO of Apple Advanced Technologies. Yes. There were 200 people there, yeah. like you and me, people who, who were working on, on envisioning the world five years from now. Yes. So some people were were just considering a task analysis for teaching in primary schools five years from now. Uh -huh. uh, 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 
just envisioning how school kids would be work, would be taught with the help of computers five years from now. Okay. And then Steve Jobs came back to Apple and he closed Apple Advanced Technologies. <laughs> and he told Donald Norman and all the 200 other people, you have two weeks to clean your desk. <laughs> this is how this works in America, in the US. <laughs> if you have a job, they can tell you, you have two weeks to clean your desk. Mm -hmm. And then 200 people went. There were at least 20 people that were my friends. They all lost their job within a week. Mm. And then Steve Jobs came and Steve Jobs, he was a genius. He had a very big head, I think. So yeah. he, he had, he had a, a feel for market. Yeah. So Steve Jobs decided we will just envision the market. And uh, well, you know, Steve Jobs is no longer here. Yeah. He's somewhere else. And, uh, and now, we are waiting what will happen with Apple. Okay. The door's locked, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve Jobs cannot get in. <laughs> so, so this is uh, this is the situation. But but Microsoft is doing well. Yeah. IBM is doing well. Yeah. Uh, at Yahoo, there are people that were my students. <laughs> so I think Yahoo is doing well. No, uh, yeah. but, but I mean these companies I know what they are doing. Yeah, yeah. Even though they are very much capitalist, right? Yes. But 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 they understand what it means to serve the client, to serve the customer, mm -hmm. and they make mm -hmm. sure that the customer gets what he likes. Mm -hmm. And for Apple, I mean, Apple was a, is is still a good company based on the market feeling of Steve Jobs. Yes. And this is a one-person genius. Okay. okay. But but it's not based on any business vision yeah it, it's it's a guy who just okay. in his mind okay. and and so at the yeah. moment nobody knows who is the real boss at apple yeah who is the real boss who points apple in the right direction yeah we don't know. so in, uh, in microsoft we know be, because yeah. you, you know people like mary chavinsky and they are working there and yes. there's the town yeah they are developing visions they are developing task models for the future yes yeah so, uh, how do you see the success of uh, Apple in the past uh, past years? And uh, because you said uh, uh, Steve Jobs uh, closed uh, uh, that it's your Steve, center. Steve Jobs wa was able to manipulate the market mm -hmm. to make people want things. Okay, so you mean the Apple's success is just. Uh, um, how to say relying on his uh, vision yeah. of my, the my market. My interpretation is yeah. Apple's success is based on the vision of a genius. Okay, yeah. Can but, but, but not based on a systematic approach and a systematic design okay. Okay. process. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it, it, it's the vision of somebody. I mean, he was a genius in, in expecting the market and, and, and making the market expect. Okay, okay. Right. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, this is clever. Yes. And it lasts yeah. as long as Steve Jobs lasts. Yeah. So, no, we are not sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and, and Microsoft is, is a much more a stable development, and the same as IBM, and the yes. same as Google or Yahoo. Yeah, yeah. These are companies that, that have an approach that, that uh, obviously, they want to make money, lots of money. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they understand that in order to make money, you need to find out your clients, your customers. Yeah. And, and you need to analyze how they work and, and what they like to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and make the, 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 the results useful for them. Mm -hmm. In a way, uh, the Apple makes it just attractive. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, this is my interpretation at the moment.